AVV Nation, welcome back. It's Patrick here at VectorVest. Hopefully you're all doing well. Today we're going to be analyzing one of the hottest sectors in the market over the last year and see if right now is still a good time to be adding stocks from that sector to your portfolio. So if you're ready to find out what sector that is and whether or not you should be adding those stocks to your portfolio right now, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get into it. <music> All right, welcome back everybody. So right now, what we're looking at is the sector viewer inside of VectorVest 7. It takes all 41 different sectors in the US market and gives us the best performers at the top and the worst performers at the bottom. So as no surprise, we see petroleum or oil stocks coming in as the hottest sector in the market. This really shouldn't be a surprise since we've seen oil running ever since about November of last year and it's continued to rally and now, as of the last few weeks, you have potential energy crises popping up in the EU and Asia, and everybody's thinking that oil is going to skyrocket. You even have some analysts coming out saying they expect to see oil at $200 a barrel in the very near future. Well, today, we're going to take a look at the sector as a whole and see whether or not we agree with that analysis and see whether or not you should still be adding stocks to your portfolio from the oil sector. So before we jump into it, as we can see right now, at the time of recording this, oil is down as a group, about 1.5%. You had some news coming out earlier this morning stating that the U.S. is still continuing to see a pileup of oil in their inventories. And you also have EU reaching out to Russia, trying to look to see if they can get oil another way rather than going through the typical providers. So... As we can see right now, this list is sorted by RT or relative timing. Now, if you're not familiar with VectorVest, relative timing is looking at the short-term price trend. Since we're looking at the sector, it's looking at the short-term price trend of the overall sector. This is going to be cast on a scale of zero to two, and above one shows us the sector is an uptrend, below one, the sector is in a downtrend. Since it's on a scaling of zero to two, above one, the closer to two it is, the stronger the uptrend, Below one, the closer to zero it is, the stronger the downtrend. So looking at it right now, we see it does have an RT of 1.26, showing that the industry on a short-term basis still is in a pretty strong uptrend. But let's go ahead, take a look at the chart of this and get a better view of what's actually happening here. So we'll go ahead and right-click on it, choose the view sector graph. There we go. And right now we're looking at a one year time frame on the overall petroleum sector. And we can see petroleum has had a substantial run once again, ever since about November of 2020, all the way up until about July. So we did see a little bit of a pullback in oil stocks throughout July until about the middle of September, but now starting to see a new run coming in. Or are we? Well, let's take a look at some of the analysis we see down here, utilizing that RT indicator we just talked about. Now, if you're familiar with any of the work that I've ever done previously, you know one of my favorite patterns to look for is going to be divergences, whether they be bullish or bearish divergences. A divergence is created when you see the price of something continuing to rise, but an indicator based off momentum starting to fall or hit lower highs, lower lows, really showing that as the price of certain asset, for now we'll talk about the petroleum sector as a whole. So as the price of the overall petroleum sector has been running, look at what RT has been doing ever since that time frame. To demonstrate this, I'll use the freehand line at the top and I'll just connect some points here, just the overall general trend that we're seeing with the price action on the petroleum sector. But at the same time, we can see price is moving higher Let's look at what RT or that short-term price trend indicator has been doing. Well, that short-term price trend indicator has been hitting lower highs and lower lows, not confirming that upward move and suggesting that downside risk outweighs upside potential. So you may be thinking, okay, market's been going higher, oil's pulling back. It can come back, especially going into the winter months when you typically see higher oil prices to begin with. But Here's a cautionary sign that we're noticing. All of a sudden you had a pretty big run up coming into the month of October so far, but then pulling back here today, not hitting that new high. Therefore, 
hitting a lower high. And as we always know, lower highs tends to lead to lower lows and by the basic definition, putting it in a downtrend. Now, you may be thinking, well, that doesn't really negate anything that we have with the overall news of oil right now. But one interesting point that nobody seems to be talking about is U.S. oil production or fracking. Well, as we know, fracking has definitely taken a little bit of a downturn or slowdown here over the last year. But with prices so high right now, that really puts these potential oil refineries in the U.S. at a possible big gain or making it extremely profitable for them. I read a recent statistic that if oil is around $30 to $40 a barrel, then U.S. fracking can stay positive at $35 to $40. Recently, we've been hitting almost $80 a barrel. Therefore, it's extremely profitable for them to start turning on those machines again, turning on the refineries, and starting to produce oil again. And once they do that, and they start catching up to the overall supply and demand aspect of things, you will notice that there will become a higher supply than what there currently is, and then that will force demand lower or force the price down, which would then take away some of the profits that these oil companies or the oil sector as a whole could potentially see. Not only that, you now have Russia coming out stating that they will start to pick up their production in oil, which could also dent sentiment in the overall sector here. So with this lower high, with this bearish divergence, right now may not be the best time to add some of these stocks to your portfolio. That doesn't mean that you should never add them again, but just for the time being, after such a long run, the oil sector as a whole is definitely due for a pullback and we are potentially starting to see signs of that pullback forming as of right now. So be careful out there as you move forward and don't try to get yourself caught up too much in the hype and adding a whole bunch of oil stocks to your portfolio at this current time. Wait for a better buying opportunity and for prices to look more attractive. And then if you're interested in adding some of these stocks to your portfolio, go ahead and do so. Now, when will you know if you should be adding those stocks to your portfolio? Well, click on the link down below, sign up for the VectorVest trial, and that way you can ensure that you will never miss the opportunity there. So now that we know what's going on with oil, we know right now may not be the best time to be buying into oil stocks. Let's take a look at some opportunities though that we could be interested in for when that bottom comes and looking for stocks that could be right for the picking. So we'll get out of here and then we'll double click on the petroleum sector and then that'll break it down into the, each individual industry that makes up the overall petroleum sector. As you can see, once again, it's defaulted to RT, so therefore the strongest momentum industries coming to the top and the worst performing industries going to the bottom. So in this list, once the bottom is in, you'll wanna look for the ones that are really starting to climb off of those lows. And if you wanna see some of the hottest stocks in any of these industries, all you have to do is double click on it once again. And as you can see, VectorVest will automatically bring you the best performers at the top and the worst performers at the bottom. So off of the bottom, what you would do is you'd come in here and just simply sort it by RT to bring the strongest relative timing stocks at the top. And those will be the ones that are really starting to take off from those bottoms there. So for example, out of the Canadian Explorer production side, you have BT, EGF, VET, and ERF. If you're looking for the safest ones though, for the long term, just simply resort it by RS or relative safety. RS is that indicator that shows risk. If it's above one, that shows less risk in a stock. Below one shows more risk in a stock. So therefore, if you're looking for the long-term stocks, AAVVF, also AETUF, both have relative safeties above the level of one, showing they're safer than the average stock out there. If we get out of here, go take a look at the US exploration and production. We sort it by relative timing once again. And we can see REI and CPE have some of the best momentum currently, but that could definitely change. You'll want to make sure you stay up to date with this going forward. And if we look for the safest ones in the list, we get LNG, FANG, which has been a popular one recently, and then PDCE. So those are three to add to your list here. All right. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, as always, smash that like button. 
Share this with all your friends. Share this with all your family. If you want to be able to do this kind of analysis going forward, as always, click on the link down in the description, sign up for the free 30-day trial, and give it a test yourself. As the old saying goes, seeing is believing. So, until next time, take care. Adios. Toodles.